talked about pneumocystis pneumonia being a, um, a hypoxic pneumonia. So what is hypoxemia? Um, hypoxia is defined as oxygen saturations of less than 92% on room air and it is a very common complication of uh, lower respiratory tract infection in children uh, present in up to two-thirds of patients admitted with um, pneumonia in some series. Now hypoxemia um, is, um, um, is defined as a partial pressure of oxygen of less than 70 millimeters of mercury um, on room air and the way you determine hypoxemia is uh, by uh, taking a blood sample and running a blood gas analysis on it and then um, you will get a reading of partial pressure of oxygen, partial pressure of carbon dioxide, the pH, um, usually the bicarbonate and from those numbers then you go ahead and calculate something that's called an AA gradient that is an alveolar arter arterial oxygen gradient. So why assess for hypoxemia? Uh, so one, it's because the clinical signs of pneumonia identify hypoxia very poorly and um, cyanosis is a, is a late terminal sign. You do not want to catch uh, pediatric patients when they are at cyanosis, especially when you're making decisions concerning oxygen, making decisions concerning respiratory support. You need to catch them way ahead of that. You need to be a couple of steps ahead of cyanosis. And um, the second reason is because uncorrected hypoxemia in acidosis usually set the stage for respiratory failure and death. Um, so if you do not correct hypoxemia early with oxygen, then you cascade into hypoxemia, um, then into respiratory acidosis, and then respiratory failure. And if that is not addressed, then you go ahead and get death. Um, specifically, in pneumocystis pneumonia, um, hypoxemia um, helps you in making decisions on oxygen therapy um, and also on the addition of steroids. Um, now, the World Health Organization recommends the use of pulse oximetry to identify hypoxia in patients who have um, pneumonia and to manage the hypoxia with oxygen um, accordingly. And as I have said, the degree of hypoxemia is what we use to classify um, pneumocystis pneumonia severity. Now, um, if you only used clinical signs and symptoms to identify hypoxia, how well would you do? Um, let's look at this study that um, was done by uh, Michael Moniki and his colleagues in Kenya and they looked at um, 13,000 admissions um, and they classified, stratified the patients into um, uh, four categories using the old World Health Organization pneumonia syndromes and about 2,000 of those patients had um, very severe pneumonia, another 2,000 had um, what was classified before as severe pneumonia. About 600 of them had just pneumonia and um, 7,000 of them had no pneumonia, meaning that they were coughing uh, but did not have tachypnea. They were coughing or had difficulty in breathing but did not have tachypnea. Um, and then they looked at um, the, the those four categories were further subclassified into the patients who had uh, confirmed lower respiratory tract infection as a final discharge diagnosis and those, one, and those ones who did not. So that is the other category that's um, subclassified as lower respiratory tract infection and others. Now what they found is that 16% um, of um, the patients who had um, 10 to 16 percent of the patients who had very severe pneumonia as classified using the World Health Organization pneumonia syndromes had hypoxemia and so required oxygen, all right? And so it means another um, 80 percent plus of patients who had very severe pneumonia might not have required oxygen. Now, if you look at the categories that are classified as no pneumonia or uh, just pneumonia, and um, when we look at pneumonia algorithms, these are patients who you can um, treat at home uh, with oral antibiotics, then if you never assessed for, hypo uh, for hypoxia using pulse oximetry, then you would miss about um, two to three percent of these patients who actually have um, hypoxia 
um, and not give them oxygen and definitely that means uh, down the line that they will develop um, hypoxemia, respiratory acidosis, respiratory failure and death um, if the problem of hypoxia is not addressed sufficiently. Um, so this is to say that um, even if um, using the World Health Organization pneumonia syndrome correctly identifies and classifies uh, pediatric patients who have pneumonia, then you need to go a step further and assess for hypoxia because um, um, hypoxia will not be treated with antibiotics. Hypoxia actually requires oxygen. Now, um, if you also look at these pneumonia syndromes, we will see that only the very severe and the severe pneumonia categories um, are we, uh, do we get a prompt in the pneumonia algorithms to consider pneumocystis pneumonia if they are infants. That means that um, if you got uh, patients with just tachypnea and cough and difficulty in breathing and you never assessed for um, hypoxia, then you could easily miss a subset of patients who have um, pneumocystis pneumonia, but who, if you just looked at the algorithms without doing um, oxygen saturations, then in these categories of patients, you would not be prompted to think about pneumocystis pneumonia, which is important. And um, you're likely to miss it in the early stages, especially when it presents in the early, um, in the subacute uh, presentations. Now, um, Talking about pulse oximetry, let's talk a little bit about how you do this. And, and so you would use a pulse oximeter, which are gadgets, um, 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 as these ones that are shown on the screen. And then um, you would have um, a gadget that usually will give you a heart rate and it will give you a reading um, of the oxygen saturations. Now the ends of the gadget can look different. Um, you have the Nelco probes usually, which is what is in the um, left upper hand corner. Um, and that one you will tie it around, uh, usually you will tie it around um, a finger or a thumb um, or the tips of the ear, or sometimes you can do it in the heel of an infant or a neonit. Um, and you can also have the other probe that looks like a clip and you, so you snap it open and fix it on any of the areas um, that are shown on the diagrams there. Um, so usually this will be the thumb, the big toe, um, any of the fingers and sometimes you can encircle the entire heel, um, especially for neonates and young children. Um, what we have to remember when we look at pulse oximetry is that um, if your hands are cold, um, then uh, the reading might not be accurate if you're in shock and so you're not perfusing the very ends, um, the, the extremities of a patient, then the reading might not be correct. Um, and um, as you continue to use pulse oximetry, um, you get to realize which areas work better what, for what kind of children. But this is a very essential step in making a diagnosis of hypoxia and we should all be endeavoring to carry out um, assessment of hypoxia using pulse oximetry in children, especially so when you're thinking of um, pneumocystis pneumonia. Now, does pulse oximetry reduce mortality at all? Um, this is a um, study um, that was done in Papua New Guinea um, looking at um, 703 children um, where they decided on oxygen therapy determined um, using pulse oximetry. And in this group of patients, after the introduction of um, uh, pulse oximetry in a hospital, in a tertiary um, hospital in Papua New Guinea, the mortality was 6.5% in the children who had um, pneumonia and in whom um, oxygen therapy was determined using pulse oximetry. Now, they compared that with a historical cohort um, consisting of 250 children. And in this um, historical cohort or retrospective cohort, um, they only determined oxygen therapy using clinical signs and the mortality in this group was 10%. So we can see an almost 30-35% um, reduction in mortality um, when pulse oximetry is used to determine oxygen therapy. Of course we can argue that with the introduction of pulse oximetry uh, maybe other um, there was further education of, of the clinicians seeing these children, people who are more sensitized to making a correct diagnosis of pneumonia um, and 
et etc etc uh, but um, just the introduction of pulse oximetry and looking at these two um, cohorts of patient patients shows a 35% um, reduction in uh, mortality um, now hypoxemia as I said is uh, lab reading um, using a blood sample usually an arterial blood gas and the reading you get um, it, depending on the machine you have might look like um, the copy of results that you have on the left hand side of the slide. Now um, you determine hypoxemia using the partial pressure of oxygen um, in the arterial blood. Um, and then you go further ahead and calculate the alveolar arterial gradient, which just means you're comparing the oxygen levels in the, um, in the alveoli as compared to the oxygen levels in the arterial. Now, the normal AA gradient is about 5 to 7 millimeters of mercury. Um, two classes of uh, pneumocystis pneumonia have been given and the first class is mild, so mild pneumocystis pneumonia and this is defined as having a, a PaO2 of more than 70 millimeters of mercury and an AA gradient that's less than 35. Um, the second category is the moderate to severe and in the moderate to severe category then you have a partial pressure of oxygen that's less than 70 millimeters of mercury and an AA gradient that is um, above 35 uh, millimeters of mercury and we will see that this has a correlation in how you go on to manage the patients after that. Um, so if a child is hypoxic then they will require oxygen and when you go ahead to manage them when you look at the two categories um, then you will need to add steroids for the moderate to severe classification of um, pneumocystis pneumonia. Um, this is a sample, uh, this is the formula that is used to calculate an AA gradient and um, um, thankfully you, um, we have many of these calculators online um, so you probably don't have to do this manually you could find you could easily find these online and so you would enter your FiO2 um, your PaCO2 um, your uh, PaO2 and with that then you're able to get a calculation of um, of your AA gradient 